Yes, as she said, my name is Brian Terrell. I'm honored to be speaking for you this evening. Uh, it's a little tense up here. Everybody's all in black and there's people walking around, uh, Secret Service guys. Um, so I'm going to do what I can. No. <laughs> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and neighbors, fellow members of this family we call the tribe, we've made it. Years ago, we walked through the doors of the Wren Building to be welcomed by cheering throngs of our fellow students. And tomorrow morning, we make the return trip to survey one final time the campus which has become our home. Now we are gathered together thus to attempt with mere words to bring summary and closure to the trials and triumphs we have shared in our time here at the college. I must admit that throughout the process which has brought me before you here today, I was cautioned that delivering a speech before such a large crowd would not be easy. True, you may be hundreds of individual onlookers, looking on with twice as many hundreds of eyes. <laughs> Barring any uh, war-torn pirates in the audience, of course. <laughs> However, when I look out across this podium, the eyes I see are those of friends and family and loved ones. We are not a mere crowd passively filling this space. We are a family, united around a great dinner table to celebrate once more before parting for a time. And standing before you now, my only fear is that my words will be insufficient to truly capture the spirit and emotions of the momentous occasion this ceremony represents. My one concern is to do you justice, to make my family proud. When I was asked to be a student speaker at this candlelight ceremony, I asked myself this, who are you, Brian Terrell? to be a student speaker at this candlelight ceremony. I thought about my answer for a long time. I cannot claim to be exceptional. I am neither valedictorian nor class president. I can only say that over my past four years here at William & Mary, I have done what I could to take advantage of the many opportunities presented to me by the college and the city of Williamsburg beyond. One such opportunity is my chance to speak to you tonight and it is one for which I am truly thankful. For no matter how you look at it, this weekend marks a milestone. I stand before you at a critical juncture in all our lives. For whether it be the close of your undergraduate studies, your master's program, or even your doctoral work, we gather here with our friends and families to mark an ending. And yet, these festivities are called commencement. Now for those of you who don't sleep with a thesaurus under your pillow like I do, <laughs> that means beginning. <laughs> Though for many of us our time here at the college has indeed come to an end, today also marks a jumping off point, a new start, the proverbial first day of the rest of our lives. For many, myself included, this is a daunting prospect. But have no fear, for though we may come to live in widely disparate locations and hold vastly different occupations, there is one thing we will always share. In the words of Sheik, Princess Zelda's alter ego, in the Nintendo 64 classic, The Legend of Zelda, The Ocarina of Time, the flow of time is always cruel. Its speed seems different for each person, but no one can change it. But a thing that doesn't change with time is a memory of younger days. Wherever we may be and whatever we may do, we will always share our memories of our time here at the College of William and Mary. Thomas Jefferson walked these grounds. John Stewart walked these grounds. <laughs> you and I, we walked these grounds. And just like Jefferson, we are all part of the story of Williamsburg. Never forget that. But now is time for a parting. Ahead of us waits the future, full of possibility. And in the words of Dr. Emmett Brown at the close of Back to the Future, part three, your future hasn't been written yet. No one's has. 
Your future is whatever you make it, so make it a good one. And finally, in the words of Brian Terrell, <laughs> to my fellow members of the William and Mary graduating class of 2012, good luck wherever life takes you. My time at the college has been an incredible ride full of people and experiences I will never forget. Thanks for taking the ride with me. And now, to show my thanks, to give something back to the people and institutions which have given me so much, I would like to recite a short poem of my own composition, which I hope will accurately capture the spirit of our gathering here today. Now this poem may or may not have anything to do with the fact that I went to see the Lorax immediately before composing this speech. Now, here goes. I'm just one man, but I speak for the class. For each tribal lad and each Williamsburg lass. And my hope is I've done so with grace and panache, for whether clean-shaven or blessed with a stash. You all deserve credit and kudos today. You all have worked hard, and we've come a long way. Twas not always easy, but we fought our way through. Now we're faced with the prospect of what next to do. But if ever uncertainty's gotten you down, I hope you think back on our old college town. Of Williamsburg, where we were given the tools to blaze our own trails and write our own rules. May this memory endure, though the days and years pass. I thank you for letting me speak for the class.